Okay, about you, Johnny, everyone. This is Professor Amin Ra, Professor Emeritus, California State University of Long Beach, a former city councilman for the city of Compton, former Compton College Board of Trustees. We want to welcome you here to the uh, Conscious Corner. Tonight, we're going to have a, a discussion about the concerns of Black people coming up in this next election. What are the major issues they think uh, should be brought out by the uh, camera, uh, Kamala Harris, or uh, Com Com Kamala Harris, or uh, uh, whoever else is running against it, what they think is the major issues. One reason we, we're going to go there is because there's so much apathy that's being said about Black people, Cornell West running, and he's uh, raising the issue about, uh, you know, some people suggesting that he's getting money from the Republicans, but he said that's dirty politics and, you know, it keeps him afloat. And so he's justifying it that way. And the other thing is, is that this is a political year. And this is why we're having so many subjects on the politics. But just to get an idea of what we think on the Conscious Corner platform, along with Brother uh, um, Machinda uh, and uh, Louisiana and his uh, area of the South, and along with Ahi out of Detroit, uh, whereas um, they're having various issues. And do they see any momentum of Black people lining up behind Kamala Harris? Or if there's any issues that they think she should address that she hasn't addressed. So we're going to start with Brother Mashinda, and then go with uh, he, and then Rasha Key, uh, Muscani, who is a, 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 a representative and 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 and, and uh, uh, representative of the uh, CNN, not CNN. What am I doing, man? <laughs> Community Education Network program that provides this platform, and uh, and his hard work as far as keeping news and information to the people. So we're going to start with Machinda. Machinda, what do you think? You said you was talking to young people. Are they politically engaged or not? And second, what do you think about the major issues that you think uh, should Black people in the South should be concerned about? Go ahead, Machinda. Well, to answer your first question is, um, I think that there's still a high level of ignorance in these parts, meaning that, uh, you know, people don't understand like who to choose, you know, but that's the, uh, that's the fallout or the res response that you're going to get from marketing. You know, there's a marketing campaign to pr promote both candidates, you know, so they spend, multi multi millions of dollars to try to persuade someone to vote for them you know so they're using social media to approach people and other means to basically get their vote you know and um so that's hard to compete with especially as in the times we're living in with with the internet with social media of course um, it's, it, you know, it's very difficult to compete with that. And what I mean by that is, you know, I can go door to door and knock on doors and talk to people and explain stuff, but, you know, people have their own news sources and their own outlets and their own platforms that they look at every day on their phones. This is where the human being is at, especially the younger people. And, um, and, 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 and when I say younger, when you're talking about 35 and under, you know, that's a tough nut to crack because, you know, my conversation is competing with, you know, what's coming across, you know, the, you know, the wire, you know, coming across the fiber, coming across the Internet, you know. So anyway, so what I do on a day to day basis, you know, I'm talking to the young people that's within my path. Um, I don't, you know, have a platform or a podcast or a um you know, website or anything like that to, to, you know, and, and, but this, I mean, I'm part of this platform, of course, and hopefully multi 
millions will listen to this platform. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're in competition with so many other. So, you know, we have a, a voter registration drive that will be on September the 17th this year. Early voting is getting ready to start in some states uh, as we speak. You know, it's getting ready to start. Early, early voting here will be in October. You know, people will be able to early vote and a mail mail in votes and things like that. Um, so I am talking to different brothers and sisters on the campus and 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 not only enlighten them, we're just having a conversation. I'm not shaming them about what they're what they appear to believe, but I am provoking thought and discussion, you know, to where, you know, I want to hear what they have to say and then of course, I give them other food for thought, and they can make their own decision based on that. Uh, yeah. But I do, I do have students that are going to participate in this voter registration. I don't care if you're not registered to vote; you're not going to be able to vote for anybody, whether it's Trump or Kamala. It don't matter. You won't even, you won't even be part of the equation. So, um, as we talked about earlier uh, on, pla you know, as you pointed out, and we talked about, you know, down, uh, down ballot you know, where they're going to be local races, you know, Congress and uh, Senates and House of Representatives that are running and possibly other local uh, elections that are going to have an impact on people. Um, but as it relates to Louisiana, you know, honestly, I told you a while ago before even the platform got started, my cup is three quarters full, not even half full, it's three quarters full. I leave a little room, 25%. I can't, I'm not totally full on anything, but I will say that a level of ignorance is at, a, at an all time high here. And that, um, honestly, um, the, the, you know, the voter turnout has been at an all time low. That's how that governor of Louisiana that we have here, he walked in in the, after the primary, he had over 50% of the vote. They had a brother that was running against him who it was, Pretty much a far gone conclusion that it was going to be a runoff just on pure numbers that we're, you know, you, we, we make up a certain percentage here to where at least you're going to be in a runoff. And then, you know, maybe we can make our voice heard, you know, be, you know, you know, for the rest of the election season. Man, that guy walked in after the primary because people fell asleep at the wheel. They're complacent, you know. So I'm telling you that. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm in search. You know, like you know, like the guys that are out there search and rescue team that's mm -hmm. out there trying to trying to search for bodies. And then after a while, you know, they call it off. They call off the search, and then we're they go into recovery mode. If mm -hmm. if the body if the body you know we're looking for the body, we don't we don't think he survived. We're just looking for the body. If the body float uh float onto shore, then we'll you know of course you know, contact the family, let them know that we found the body and, you know, make sure we bury them well and have a nice day. So mm -hmm. it's it's almost to that point to where, you know, we're in recovery mode here. The people are, are so far asleep in this state. But guess the good news is I haven't gave up. I'm mm -hmm. going to continue to uh, enlighten and try to wake up folks and try to say, hey, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to make a choice, but make your choice based on uh, information, based on uh, make an educated uh, choice, based on uh, something that you research, not because you got mesmerized by some five second uh, commercial on the Internet or some fool talking uh, 30 minutes on the Internet trying to trying to talk you out of, you know, Whatever he's trying, whatever he's trying to accomplish, you know. So again, I'm just one person in the equation, and I'm gonna do the best that I can. But uh, you know, we like I say, we're trying to get people registered to vote. Uh, I, I'm trying to put a team together, and uh, it starts with the where I work at, and uh, and and then you know, outside of that, there are other soldiers out there that are doing it. I'm well informed on that. I talked to family members, talked to one of the family members, the young nephews. One of the older nephews, I said, hey, man, you registered to vote? He called me out the blue yesterday. He said, hey, I'm just checking on you, Unc. I said, hey, man, I, I'm, thank you, man. I appreciate that. You know, I pick him up from work sometime, give him a ride home. I said, did you register to vote? And he said, I'm going tomorrow. 
So tomorrow was today. So mm-hmm. guess what? I'm a, I, I might not talk to him today, but tomorrow I'll be checking to see if he did it. You know, one vote at a time. You know, and all we can do is just try to keep the energy positive. But, uh, you know, I've been for it for the long haul, bro. You know, uh, the question is, are there organizations and is there money, is there a radio program that's uh, trying to uh, reach the masses? You know, we know there's a lot of individual effort. But it, no, uh, radio. Uh, no, no radio, radio. No, no radio, no radio. No, there's no, this radio is controlled by Europeans. And if you try to go to New Orleans to, you know, use that, that costs a lot of money. Nobody, it's not at that level. The people are asleep. They're not. It, now, I will say this in the new in New Orleans proper, they do have uh, radio and they do have uh, commercials and things like that. They do that in New Orleans area. But right. down in the country, down in the country, the local radio stations are rednecks. And right. so that, that's a whole nother program. So you got to do a grassroots movement. You have the you have the NAACP and uh NAACP as you know as I hope you know that, that has transformed over the years to a certain degree depending on where you at you mm. got some you got some 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 serious revolutionaries in certain uh NAACP chapters and then you got some that are status quo and whatever but in these parts you got some regular down to earth grassroots type of people and they are involved in the, in the that those are the folks that my nephew has talked to that has been canvassing the neighborhoods and the stores and the people in the community to register to vote. And then once you get them registered to vote, you know, of course, they are in trying to enlighten them on other issues and things like that. So that from an organizational standpoint. Uh, but I'll be honest, you know, this this town has been diluted. You should have the voters leave. Usually used to have the deacons of defense and justice here. You know, those organizations are gone. So this, you talking about a revolutionary little town that was godfathers in the whole game. But uh, of course, you know, t- time has, the people have died off and uh, the kids have been, the internet has taken the minds of their predecessors, their lineage, their, 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 their offspring. And so therefore, it's a little more difficult now to compete with that. I'm speaking real talk. So, yeah, yeah, but I yeah. haven't, I, I haven't given up. I haven't given up, and uh, I'll continue to spread the, you know, spread the good. So, so there's really nobody um, uh, working the internet from this. Well, 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 my first question is: so you don't think there's a momentum uh, to register to support uh, Kamala Harris, be, uh, as far as what they're trying to do, get young people? and women to come out there are yeah there are people there are people on internet there there are all kind of different uh websites and different things that are put together but again it's it's you know the the algorithm you know it's an algorithm it's like you know in other words i can i can put up a website and say hey you know vote for kamala harris and this is what she's about and this and that but do i you know it's kind of like this i'm competing with you know the the way the social media is is designed. Uh, you you know you have to have followers. You have mm-hmm. to have people that follow you. You know even this network. You know I mean we don't have a lot of followers. We get sometimes we uh, get a thousand or a hundred depending on what we're talking about. Sometimes we get thirty seven or ten. You know but honestly from a social media standpoint. You got to have a following. You got to have you 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 have to have people who are subscribing to your channel in order for you know and and then you know there are a lot of folks that have nine point five million nine point five million people who uh, watch their show. I was watching uh, Club Shay Shay. That's Shannon Sharp, the football Hall of Famer. He had uh, uh who who did he have on his show? Uh, he had somebody on there recently. Some. Anyway, they had 9.5 million views, you know. Cat but Williams? What Cat Williams? No, 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 no. Cat Williams had 50 million. But who did, But what I'm saying is, you know, they listen to Cat Williams. For, they got 50 million people. Over 50 million saw that. Mm. But I was just talking about recently. Mm. You know, I'm all, I'm all over the Internet. I'm a technology person, you know, by trade, you know, mm-hmm. so... I'm 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 looking at all the platforms and different things, doing my own research, 
you know, and, and checking things out on a regular basis. But Club Shay Shay had um uh who was it was somebody on there recently. I see so much stuff, but anyway, mm -hmm. it was nine point it was nine point five million views on there for this person. And mm -hmm. I don't I, I, I honestly I can't remember who the person was. I just knew that they were a media darling, some some entertainer, mm -hmm. uh, some you know somebody who I, I'll it's think about it in a minute. So never yeah, that. exactly. There you go. And so mm -hmm. I will I will think about it in a few and let you know. But what okay. I'm saying that that's what we're competing with. If he got nine point five million views and I got you know and we got thirty seven views, you know this is what we're competing with. So yeah, yeah, and so. Yeah. But see, yeah, so uh, but you don't sense black women in the south because they used to try to steal and, and uh, 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 when you know what it is. I don't think there's a possibility. I don't know if they're not putting enough money in Louisiana. Uh, they just write it off because of the the grip uh, the southern uh, um, whites have on on it uh, from the local level. That's uh, it. That's in, in bottom line, period. you hit it. You mm -hmm. hit it on the nose. Yeah, you, but, you have probably you got more you got more Democrats in Louisiana probably than Republican. But yeah. the Democrat, but the Democrats here, they call you got your blue dogs and you got your yellow dogs. Yeah. You know, the blue the blue dog gonna vote for a Republican for Senate, for president, and all that. But when it comes to certain local uh because it's that old Dixiecrat party that they'll vote for certain Democrats. But they still, but the yellow dog, they said they'll vote for a yellow dog before they work for vote for a Republican. And right. I know those people. I know some rednecks who profess rednecks. The dude told me the redneck, this and that. How do I know? Because I'm one. But they are mm -hmm. Democrat. And they're going to they vote for Obama. And they're probably going to vote for Kamala. Well, actually, the, this last Repub this last uh, redneck that I deal with, he's a watermelon farmer. He's a retired you know, he's retired in the educational system. He went independent because he's not going to vote for Kamala. So he goes independent. He's going to use that as he said, he said, I just can't go down with her. But he they he voted for Obama, though. And the other redneck I know voted for Obama. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know and I can't say that I know that for a fact. But for the fact that they told me, because they'll be happier to tell me that don't vote for. But, you know, you need to vote for Trump. You need to vote for this. But they said that they voted for Obama because they, no matter what, they're going to vote Democrat because the yellow dog Democrats. That's okay. they said. That's the old saying. They'll vote for a yellow dog before they vote for a Republican. That's mm. a that's, that's that's a defined meaning there. However, uh, some of them go independent, and then uh, because they're just not going to go with the woman, like they can't do it because mm. uh, they just they, it's misogynistic and. And, and and male chauvinistic to where they're not going to just go with Hillary Clinton. They're not going to go with Kamala Harris. They just can't do it because they are, their ego won't let them because a woman has no place preaching in the church. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's, I'm going to come back to you before we leave. Brother Ahi, you there? Do you sense any, uh, you're on mute. But do you sense any uh, mo uh, mobilization or um, enthusiasm behind uh, Kamala Harris in her campaign or just people being involved in uh, this coming up election locally, nationally, and, uh, you know, from that standpoint? Yeah. Uh, I know <laughs> uh, Kirkpatrick said he's going to vote for he endorsed Trump. And his mother was a Democrat, but but Trump got him he's out of prison too. But, okay. her from here. He, anyway, his his mama, who was a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, congresswoman mm -hmm. for generations here, he just destroyed her career. A whole lot of people, of course, out of their ignorance, lost respect for her because of him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you can never erase her contribution uh, to this community. Uh, the same people who are on the front lines always. We used to have a black slate. I, a lot of this, I'll probably just reiterate what my brother, uh, Michelle, just said down in Louisiana. We used to have a, a black slate here. I haven't seen that uh, lately. Um, the churches, of course, uh, are lining up. 
Uh, it seemed to be on one accord here in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Pamela is the one. And of course, uh, uh, most of our intelligentsia, especially in the H HBCU, uh, are pushing hard uh, with her um, uh, connection to uh, the black colleges and uh, her sorority, uh, the so-called Divine Nine Black Sorority and Fraternity organizations have all galvanized behind her. Um, here, um, uh, the, 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 the same ones, are the mothers who lead the struggle here in, in the, some of our smaller organizations, uh, uh, local uh, organizations, uh, political organizations on, on, on the local uh, front. Uh, you know, it's a, it, we're still a, a majority black city and we galvanize behind the system. Okay, but even even the ones that are uh, uh, conservative, but that uh, uh, some of our young black people, like the Democrats, like the the Dixiecrats brother was calling the Dixiecrats, uh, even the, the young brothers who uh, uh, will vote like some of these, what do you call them, the the blue coat Dixiecrats. Mm -hmm. You know, they Democrats uh, by name only, but they like uh, wolves in cheap clothing kind of cop people. Which is like sabotage or something. I think I, I don't understand that with the the Democratic Party because the Republican show don't have no people over there that uh, reflect uh, 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 the more liberal um, opinions. So, uh, but uh, outside of that, uh, any of the uh, on the high school levels, just to, uh, we have a few black radio stations, and they're always pushing. Uh, to to get to get the vote for from the from the colleges, local colleges and the high schoolers, and I was at a game, and uh, uh, they were talking about uh, the votes there. I think they were out there even recruiting the young people who were eighteen and old enough to register to vote to vote. So there's a push here in the city. You know that's good because Michigan is one of those. I mean, uh, yeah, Michigan is one of those swing states. And so they're spending money in Michigan, um, as as far as uh, trying to win that keep you know. Get, they're going to need to. Everybody. They're going to have to come up with something to appease uh, our Middle Eastern brothers, our Eastern brothers and sisters. Now, we mm -hmm. have the largest Arab population in the country is right here, mm -hmm. and they didn't win Michigan by a lot. Yeah, but see, and, they, and the Arabs can be the deciding factor that there those many of those of them there if they galvanize their vote and they decide that they're not getting enough from the Democrats concerning that Gaza and the Middle East situation, period, and their stance along with the Zionists over in Palestine, mm -hmm. um, they're going to have a problem. Uh, so they're either not going to vote, but they're not going to vote for Trump, right? They'll go with Cornell West. He's yeah. been he's been he's been over in uh, Dearborn like about three times this past year, mm -hmm. and he's and he's uh, um, stated his support for Palestine and called Israel an illegal state. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I hasn't flinched saying it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but from the standpoint of um, the struggle in Detroit and in, uh, you know, Ann Arbor and all of those places that, you know, they they have a lot of uh, college students there and things of that nature at the University of Michigan, Central Michigan State. Right. Wayne State here in the city, mm -hmm. University of Detroit, yeah. where um, Spencer Haywood went. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mary Grove, mm. uh, Oakland University, uh, and of course the community colleges. Uh, yeah, you... we got we there are a lot of and 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 I would say mostly uh, uh, mostly although we there are a whole lot of conservatives you'd be surprised like on Michigan State oh, they're no, turning out oh man Michigan State University you'd be surprised and it's a state institution mm. very conservative. Very conservative, and also mm -hmm. Wayne stayed in the middle of Detroit. They yeah. have a whole, they have a whole lot of conservative uh, views and people in power. Yeah, you know, you know? Michigan's the home of a lot of the um, 
uh, uh, militias. Oh, and, yeah, you know, they have a lot of militia groups in in in, in the rural areas of Michigan. I, we I have think a, that's where Timothy McVeigh came from. Uh, who was trained there or something. Right, yeah. right. Before yeah. he went down to Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah well, remember now when uh, Gretchen was, they came up in the, in, in the uh, Capitol with guns. Yeah, they was going to kidnap her too. They yep, got, they tried. Yep, there was a, uh, uh, an attempt to kidnap her. They foiled it. You know, we had uh, this brother named Hill Harper. He's an actor. Uh, he was one of uh, the people who was in school at the same time when Obama was in school. In fact, he looked at him as being a counselor, a mentor mm. kind of guy. Well, he ran for Senate here uh, mm. in Michigan mm. against, this, against this woman who was uh, a career politician. Mm -hmm. And he hit everything on the head as far as this community. He, Of course, he's been around. He's got interest in Louisiana. I know he owns some uh, properties in Louisiana were right after Katrina that he said that kind of messed with the money and kind of still has that, some interest down there in uh, 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 Los Angeles and mm -hmm. uh, he moved here because uh, mm -hmm. he said he liked the spirit of the people and it's, he's raising a child that he adopted. Okay. Uh, he hit everything on the head but he lost to this career politician that uh, she had a lot of name recognition and she votes like my man was saying, like the blue Democrats okay. on crucial issues here. Now that could be a problem, mm -hmm. you know, because I look and I look around the black people, but you know, the white folks, you never know. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. question, is there any specific groups that's uh, standing out buying advertisement or really uh, you know, I, I mean, with black, you know, they're trying to reach out to young people and black people. And you just mentioned that they was at football games and doing that. That's a good thing. Do do you think that they're doing enough uh, if they're trying to really uh, get voter registration from the high school, eighteen year old, and from the uh, standpoint of uh, black women groups uh, springing up to try to get their kids and families and loved ones to vote. Is there any momentum of black women making a move or organizations? Uh, I just, well, just like the sororities and the fraternities and, and the, the, the Eastern stars, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure are still in uh, getting it down here. Um, mm -hmm. um, Machinda was talking about these, these sound bites and these 30 seconds on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the internet. And I think that the, the Democrats need to do a better job of contradicting and stopping these lies right in their tracks. Mm -hmm. You got to play that type of game because that's what the young people are. Okay. I was talking to my son earlier and I was hoping that he would be on the on this podcast tonight. Mm -hmm. But he sent me some information about this cat named Joe Rogan. Now he's a real conservative dude. My son is down in Biloxi, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And he fancies himself uh, kind of knowledgeable and stuff. But even he and with a father like myself, this you know, talking about uh, alternative information and what he would get in school, or maybe even in the social circuit circle, mm -hmm. he still has um, a tendency to be listening to a lot of these con uh, conservative people and their views on money, social issues, and political issues. Mm -hmm. And I just think we just need to. Uh, 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 revolutionaries and uh, maybe the Democratic Party. We got to we got to get it and use this technology to to uh, to our benefit. Okay, okay, uh, Brother Sharara, you there? You on mute, Sharara? Yes. Greetings, everyone. So, brother, we're trying to see if there any momentum in Atlanta. In Georgia, <laughs> it's a swing state. Everybody tries to win it. Uh, uh, do you have your ear to the ground to see if there's a black women movement or black men movement or black people well, movement to get black people involved in this politics? And what do you think are the major issues? Well, I'm just an observer, you know. I'm just an observer. I'm quite sure there are women, men and women here that is involved in the political um, process 
as it refers to the voting process. You know, um, I'm sent things in the mail all the time, you know, mm -hmm. about registering to vote and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just an observer, you know. Mm. I'm collecting information as I see how my people is handling themselves politically and um, and how those who are asking my people for their political power, um, how they have been carrying themselves. I'm talking about, you know, the black faces that are political um, candidates and, and those who are also of the other ethnicities that are political mm -hmm. candidates seeking the black vote. I've been observing the black people's vote for several decades now since I've been in this country. And, you know, I'm looking at it. It's very, it's a very muddy situation right now, mm -hmm. you know, na nationally across the country when it comes to the black people. And, and um, it used to be where they just split the black vote in order to not render anything of power to the black people. But now it seems like they not only have split it, but they have also introduced like other types of, you know, uh, issues to split the black vote up even further. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm just an observer. I really don't have a comment or anything more than, you know, I'm just observing, you know, I, I come in to actually listen, you know, Politically. Yeah. yeah, but do you vote and do you think people should vote? Well, I think people should do whatever they, they heart and their conscience lead them to do. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, from, from just a simplistic standpoint. Mm -hmm. But I think voting is a power, you know, and I think when anything you register to do, you are giving up that power just in the act of registration, number one. And then when you actually execute the vote or whatever it is you, you do in the registration process, um, then you are actually endorsing that you're giving your energy to that entity. And, you know, um, either way, you know, I'm not against the vote, but I feel like if black people are going to vote, one of the first thing they all need to do is come together before even an election of any sort come along, whether it be local election or federal uh, national election, like for the president, I think black people need to do the work before they go to the polls. Mm -hmm. They need to all unite themselves and sit down exclusively mm -hmm. and talk about who they will vote for and all come to a consensus mm -hmm. across the country mm -hmm. and vote for one entity all black people that vote need to do that. All black people that vote need to vote for one party, in one party, and for one candidate. And then the black people will be powerful in the voting uh, process. Do you know any ethnic group or race group that vote like that? <laughs> well, I know that the Caucasians mm -hmm. in America, the white Americans, used to vote like that. And the first time they stopped doing that, it, it caused a problem amongst white people. The first time they started doing that was when they joined the Black Republicans and voted with the Black Republicans, because originally Black people were predominantly the majority in the Republican Party. And then when the white uh, Democrats some of them became Republican, joined the black people. The white Democrats was angered by that and it caused quite a stir. And uh, outside of that, I don't know of any group that does that, no. I don't, mm -hmm. think, I don't think the voting process would take kindly to any group that does that. Mm, well, well, each party does that mostly. Republicans vote Republicans, Democrats vote De Democrats, mm -hmm. independents choose whichever one, and then you mm -hmm. got other parties. It's not, you know, Peace right. and Freedom Party and like, uh, uh, you know, Cornell was running on a different party, mm -hmm. uh, independence and things of this nature, a Freedom and Justice Party, whatever he calls it. Mm -hmm. So people have alternatives, but I was just wondering if 
you sense any momentum in the in Atlanta for people to vote uh, Democrat or Republican because you have Stacey Abrams down there. You have a couple of people that led the needing black people to register. You got um, souls to the polls with uh, uh, the senator, the black senator from Atlanta, uh, who teaches at Martin, preaches at Martin Luther King Church. Um, you know, uh, but, but uh, you know, from the standpoint of keeping an ear on the black people, because they're trying to get, of course, they try to get every vote, white, black, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But they're really trying to get African Americans who are, are apathetic or whatever don't choose to vote or don't feel that it, it's worth it to register and, and get behind Kamala Harris. And I wanted to know if you heard of any movement like that. Oh, no. You know, I just, like I said, it's been the same. My observation has been the same when the election comes up. You know, they have a group of Black people that votes Democrat and a group of Black people that votes Republican. Mm -hmm. And um, that's basically mm -hmm. the general thing. But, you know, the media controls a lot of what people do. Mm -hmm. You know, many people may not understand or believe that the media have that power to do that, but they do. You know, um, they control people's thoughts and people's minds and what they de they decision making process. Mm -hmm. And the more you give people to think about, is the is is the weaker people are because if you give them a bunch of decisions to make, you give them a whole lot of different choices to vote. Mm -hmm. Then what good is their vote? Because it's only two parties that's predominantly controlling the whole shift and the whole nation itself, you know? So I don't see the Socialist Party, and they do have that party here, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the Independent Party. I don't see that. I don't see them getting into the White House, you know what I'm saying? I just don't see that. I've never seen it. And maybe others know of an independent a president and candidate that ran on independence and was voted for and got the endorsements and got into the White House. I don't, I've never heard of it. But um, Democrats and Republicans are the ones that control that whole thing. And the um, the people that, uh, what they call them, lobbyists, you know, that come in and do what they do. And then you have the media to control, who to control the media. Then you have the banks and then you have the corporations. And so the people that are voting Yes, they're voting, but unless they vote as a block, I don't see how I don't see their effectiveness. I don't, I don't see it. I mean, it's good to exercise your right to vote, but if it's not effective, then what? How is it serving you? Um, as far as Georgia is concerned, like I say, even in Florida and other states that I've lived in since I've been here in this country. It's been the same for black people. You know, they vote and they continue to vote. And maybe one day they'll get what they want. I don't know. You don't think they've been getting what they want from either party, major party? Yeah, yeah I mean, the history of the black people's vote in America and the history of the behavior, the political machinery here, the, the political industrial complex shows that they, they really don't care about what happens to black people here and but, even though you have black people that rise through the occasions of congressmen and senators and, and you hear some of them have quite a loud voice but the effect of it on the black community and the black people as a whole i really don't see how it has benefited us i think we have benefited in a way that we can say you know yeah you know we, we benefited but not in a in a in a really significant manner. So and so when, when 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 Biden said he wouldn't be president if it wasn't for black people, he appointed a black woman to be his vice president and committed to putting a black woman on the Supreme Court uh and uh gave the HBOs a bunch of money and uh you know kept uh Obamacare full uh, that many black people benefit from. You don't think those were victories by black people who can No, those those are victories. Those are victories. You know, those are victories for mm -hmm. whatever it is worth. You know what I mean? It's it's a victory. But um what I'm saying to you as a whole, the black 
people as a whole, as an ethnic group, as Kamala said, that she's not going to do anything specifically for Black people. So if, if the candidates that are running are not going to do anything specifically for Black people, but yet and still they do things specifically for other people that benefit other people specifically, then, you know, I don't, I have to just observe, mm -hmm. you know, I have to just observe because I, I, it's confusing to me, you know, what, you know, I'm voting for somebody and I'm not speaking specifically for Kamala Harris, but, you know, a party, I'm just voting for a specific party that's not really, that, that once they're in office, nothing really happens after that. That, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not making it up. It's not my opinion. I've, I've, I've lived here. I've lived here since I was in elementary school, mm -hmm. and I'm 69 now. Mm -hmm. And I can say I've seen the face of America change. The political face, the social face of America, transform itself into what it is today. And I'm like, you know, I'm looking to see what what has actually. What 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 is our advancement? What are we producing as a people? Not Same as Americans, agenda. yeah. But as black people, what are we producing? What what are we building for us? What is the product that black people is is manufacturing? Where why aren't we getting the support from our successful black people that are in politics, that are in um corporate um, corporations and that, that have built businesses? Why are we not inside of our community creating jobs for our people, specifically for our people? Why aren't we solving our problems? Mm. Why do we need other ethnicities to take time out of what they're doing to pay attention to us and to, you know, give us whatever it is we, we, we think we need or want or seeking for? I don't want I don't understand it. So I so stay you, out. You 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 equate uh, our history with other people's history. No group here other than the Native American who was killed and and massacred, the, the first Holocaust on this country, and the second one was our enslavement for hundreds of years, I still have an effect on the attitudes and and perspectives of black people and their indoctrination that their freedom rests with them becoming more American rather than those that's trying to build a, a black conscious movement that uh, you speak of, a black uh, unity movement uh, that you speak of and the efforts of this country to do with Cointel Pro, counterintelligence program, that said they did not want a black messiah to rise and lead black people to unity, put leaders in prison, assassinated leaders, Malcolm X in 1964, Martin Luther King in 1968, um, and a host of others. Um, you, 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 what, what's your position on those, 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 those things that there's, it's not an accident that we haven't come together because some historians and, and social <coughs> researchers uh, say it's not to American interest for us to uh, come together and unify. So they create the dissent among ourselves like they did with the Native American, divide and conquer that it's not because of the lack of our desire or wanting. It's the lack of uh, our ability to control the institutions that would guide us toward that and the use of those institutions as military operate, uh, op uh, apparatus to keep the status quo the same uh, as white people in power, like they're doing with Trump. You know, I mean, it's not an accident. Or do you think it's just black people apathy by itself? I think it's black people's inability to evolve within the, the light of their blackness, within the light of their identity. Mm -hmm. Our failure to evolve mm -hmm. beyond the system of America Okay. okay. Wherein, wherein we have a responsibility towards our generations. Mm -hmm. We don't have a responsibility to this system. 
we have a responsibility to our generations. And when I say our generations, I'm speaking in terms of, I, for instance, I have children and I have, my children have children, which becomes my grandchildren. And those children will have children, which are, we call the unborn. So we have a responsibility to the black people, to our identity. That doesn't mean we don't care about other ethnicities. It just means that we have a responsibility to care for our own first, to build educational systems for our own, to build healthcare systems for our own, to build transportation systems for our own, to build communities for our own. And if we are going to not take that responsibility up and we are going to go through the American system to achieve things for us that's in our best interest, then we ought to do that as a united block of people. And if we're not going to go through the American system, then we need to look at each other and come together and those who have the ability and capability to do things come together and do it without fear and without consideration of a pushback from the system. Because when you practice self-determination and self-reliance and self-sufficiency, you will get a pushback from the system, although it's your human right to practice these things. Mm. And they know this. Mm. So, we, you know, it's not so much that what I believe in is more or less really the truth about what's happening to our people and what have been happening to our people mm. and have not stopped happening to our people. Mm. And at some point, we have to take an active role in saying we will solve our problems. And it doesn't matter what the governor wants to think, doesn't matter what the mayor wants to think, doesn't matter what the Congress wants to think, doesn't matter what the Senate wants to think, it doesn't matter what the president wants to think. Mm. We have mm. to stand on our own two black feet mm. and do for self, mm. work magic, our magic on ourselves mm. as much as we've worked it on the American society mm. today. Basically, yeah. that, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm just an observer, though, you know, because... Yeah. Well, well, Marcus Garvey taught that as well as the Nation of Islam and... Oh, that they all, you know, they started. Now, to that everybody to knows that. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good point. Uh, Rasha yeah. King. Rasha King, you have any uh, perspective of the of uh, young people momentum in voting and uh, women momentum in voting in the LA area as far as uh, in this national election as well as local? Just, just what we had on this show for the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. with uh, Daniel Tabor, Dr. Daniel Tabor and his daughter. Mm -hmm. And working from that that point there, I've, I've been looking at what I could do to to galvanize some interest with these with young people through other young people. And so I've been in the backgrounds, trying to address that. I mean, it, uh, excellent points by by all. And I think uh, Brother Machinda hit it on the nose when he said that the, the media platforms, the small sound bites and all of that is taking the interest of a lot of people who may not have the capacity to go and do their own research. Mm -hmm. So they jump on whatever train is moving in the popular direction. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not privy to too many uh, organizations other than what's been presented here. Mm -hmm. So no, I don't. I don't know of any. You know, because because what, what I'm basically what I do here. I'm at home all the time. I do this here, and uh, it is my objective to 
to start doing some things in the political area as far as this organization. And I, I think Brother Chihuahua made a good point also when he said we need a block vote. But you know, it's 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 tough. It's a it's a uphill battle to get people to think in a manner that's gonna benefit them versus the indoctrination that you always mentioned, Professor Ra, uh, that's been placed upon them and they're not able to to see beyond that. So this is why we, we're here doing what we're doing. And it's just an uphill battle. And it's going to take work, work, and work to get people to see that the way they're, they're living is not a good thing when it comes to, to the value system that's, that's presented by the American system. So mm -hmm. the work is here and we... We're doing it and other people are doing it too. So yeah. I'm, I'm listening and and I'm hearing some good things and let's keep it let's keep it going. Well, you know, when you can't get your issue, you vote your interest. Uh when I mean, you can't get what you Professor want. Professor Rock, one more yeah. thing before you get before you let mm. me just say this. When Daniel Tabor came on for part one. He said, working to get Kamala Harris the, to be the president is one thing. But the other thing is, once she get in, we have to make sure that we're doing the groundwork for her to address the issues that we have and, and the policies we want in place. And it, it's one thing getting the person in, and this makes sense to me. It's another thing to put the work behind it to be politically active, to make sure everything that, that we want addressed get addressed. And it has to be a, 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 a block of people to do that. So once, once if she's elected, then we, that means that the organization still has to, to build, to get the, any needs that that we want that we want that, to be addressed, we have to we have to push that. The work there's work to be done after the election, so it's an ongoing thing. So that's what I wanted to mention. Yeah, yeah, and and appreciate what everybody said. If I understand correctly, and like you said, everybody made good points, but you know, it's 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 very complicated uh, to. Uh, have these aspirations and uh, visions of our people uh, to uh, matriculate into a block. What we represent from 10 to 20 percent. Um, I, I think it's more like 15 percent of the population in the United States. Uh, it's 300, over 300 million people. And if we, we, we 40 million or 20 million, it's not that many. And the majority of them are of young age. And uh, they're not even engaged, but well, it's it's a it's a it's a struggle to to maintain black communities. I mean, I, I grew up in Watu, was a black community at one time. South at Central was a what they used to call South Central was majority black, and all that has changed. Uh, people moved out for various reasons. Black businesses sold them to other people. Even the hair hair uh, thing that was going around with Afro Sheen and all that, they all sold them to agents because they offered them so much money and wig shops and, and things of this nature. Um, you know, the few vestiges of buildings are just petty businesses, barber shops, um, beauty salons, uh, some, uh, you know, eating establishments, you know, very few. And then at the same time, it's, it's a challenge when you don't have the money. You either punish people or reward them to control their behavior or, or to inspire their behavior to come along with you. You can't just give them a cause and a reason. You can give some people the cause and a reason, but the majority, hey, what's in it for me? You know, 
I mean, uh, uh, you know, look at the money they're spending on this uh, national elections. Uh, I think Cameron's raised close to five hundred um, million in in her short in her short time, uh, and and that's not just counting what Biden had won and 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 and, and using. And and as Sharawa said, they just represent the Democratic Party, so they have to be very skillful in their articulation of what they can do for any group, uh, specifically Black people. I mean, Sharawa's right; they've always got us to vote uh, for issues that uh, uh, help them more than it helps us. But we get a little bit of the drippings every now and then. But the, the issue is in politics, there's no ethics and morals in politics. There's no values in politics. You hope the person you're running against running the problems. It ain't no, uh, each person I wish you loved and the best person come out. It's not like that in politics. You know, and Trump proved that all the time. He lose the popular vote every time, but uh, they set up a, uh, uh, what they call an electoral college of certain majority white states that uh, control their delegates uh, to to determine the president. You really don't vote the president in. You vote for delegates to go vote the president in. And uh, it's a it's a challenge from a national election. That's the only election everybody votes for is the president and uh, and his ticket, the vice president. Everybody else vote on state issues and uh, county issues and city issues. And those are the issues that really affect our daily lives, even though federal policies affect it too. And so you listen and try to uh, say, well, hey, what, who can I vote for to let me continue my struggle and aspirations, as Sharaw pointed out, as Haib pointed out, and as Mashinda pointed out, and you too, Rashiki. You know, you, 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 you got to, Understand this, you, you're talking to uh, a president and uh, senators and Congress people, they deal with international issues. They they deal with big money, trade, and things of this nature. There's a lot of money floating around up there. Uh, <coughs> over trillions of dollars of policies. And as uh, Sharon would say, uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, well, everybody says there's so many lobbyists and things of that nature. It's a challenge. And we're learning the game. We're learning the game. And we're realizing that they mobilize their kids in patronism and being a patriot and being um, conscious of what's going on at an early age. Whereas we uh, have a tendency to let our kids grow up and do whatever they want to do. Instead of saying, hey, you know, you got to do this and putting a value on struggle and unity. You know, uh, I mean, very few people telling their kids, hey, look, uh, get along with your brothers and sisters. They're your allies. They're the people you got to work with. No fighting, no cussing, no no jamming, no drugs, no alcohol, no this. And and while you're in school, try to get the school to be more responsive to your needs as a school. Be a leader. Don't let the system change you. You change the system. It's very few people teaching their kids to be revolutionary in that context. And so, uh, you know, some do. You know, I know a lot of families, their kids are real active, but uh, it, it ain't in the millions or thousands, you know, so there's just a few people that, uh, you know, in different states that do that. It's a struggle. All you have to do is look at yourself and, um, and see what do you do to get your, your family to work toward unity. But we always been a diverse people. We, the continent of Africa is the most diverse continent with regards to ethnic groups uh, and, 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 and communities uh, on the planet. I mean, you know, you got different, different type of brothers and sisters on the continent and that think differently. And you have brothers and sisters here that think differently. No group got all their people in unity. There's not one ethnic group or racial defined group which most black people don't see themselves in terms of races until the white man named them that. Uh, they just saw themselves as human beings, as, as, as Jay Rogers said, ain't even one race, the human race. And, uh, but it, it's a struggle. And, and, I, and I, you know, Reverend Barber with the Poor People Campaign, 
He's trying to unite, unite all poor people to get them to vote regardless of their colors, race, anything. If you're poor, you should be in the poor people campaign and become a voting block in that. And that means alliances with poor people who think they're better than you, even though y'all both are suffering because of their race, you know, in a racist society. The hierarchy, white, uh, brown, uh, yellow, brown, red, brown, and uh, black. And uh, it's, it, it's a difficult. And they pay these people to, uh, to, to, to be with them. It, Uncle Tom is, is a big money. Ask Clarence Thomas. You know, he's making big money, you know. I mean, and, and we're not really, like the Sherrod said, you know, you know, there ain't no such thing as a black middle class. That's why they keep saying the black working class. Hold up, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> what? You uh, said Uncle Tommy is a, is a big business. <laughs> yeah, it's always have been. Oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's always have been. It's always been that way, man. People sell out for money. You know that. I mean, some people, some people can't be bought, and them the ones they assassinate. You know, I, I mean, you know, Martin Luther King died poor. Malcolm X died poor. Malcolm didn't even have a house when he left. The nation took it back. You know, I mean, so uh, John, uh, Meredith, all of them, you know, but they have high aspirations and they never lose faith in their people. You understand, and and they know that the struggle is a long, protracted struggle. Things ain't gonna happen overnight. You understand? It ain't no. It's not like uh, fast food. It takes years of cultivating. We may not see it, but there'll be a generational change. You know, we have lulls in the movement, but there are still people out there working their butts off to build, build black consciousness movements. Uh, the Black World Institute. Uh, um, uh, in COBRA, the National Coalition for Black Reparation. Uh, they're, they're trying to build it. Black United Front. Uh, you know, there's been, we used to have Black Freedom Bank in the, uh, in the early 70s, I mean, early 90s. Uh, they uh, 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 tried to get it. We, we had one back in the 1800s. Frederick Douglass was ahead of it, you know, but, you know, it, it it ain't easy. Look, Marcus Garvey had the biggest movement without radio and TV in the history of black movements. And uh, they put the man in jail for a $21 uh, a contribution. And they had uh, infiltrated his organization. And he died in exile. You know, I mean, look how black history, Dr. B and John McCart, Clark, they all died poor. You understand? Exposing the system. You know, it's, it, 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 you, it's, it's why they, it's not, it's about their sacrifice, their commitment, not for money and not for just personal recognition, but really try to help people see the system for what it really is in, instead of being blinded by the cobwebs of confusion. So it's a, it's a long struggle. But anyway, uh, it was a good discussion this evening. What we got going on? Uh, uh, can I can I ask you this? Can I ask you this, uh, yeah. Ryan? Yeah. What uh, What do you think about the white dudes for Kamala and the Republicans uh, for Kamala? These are uh, organizations that are uh, pushing for her well to get their presidency. I think there's two things, two or three things. One that they uh, don't want to lose their power or their influence because of the Trump cultism of the MAGA movement. They're not necessarily for camera. They're just against Trump. And that's a difference. They're voting for conditions. As I said, they're not voting for camera. Their best option is a camera presidency because they got inroads into that versus a Trump who had uh neutralized the Supreme Court, converted it, who has gotten local voter registrars and uh, uh, certification uh, delegates in his pocket to become a, 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 a situation where they may not be able to vote again and they lose their power of being able to compete fairly because he controls a certain element of the MAGA party that 
could hurt them locally. In other words, he can primary Congress people and senators with his 40% of MAGA to that if they don't do what he say, he'll run somebody against them and endorse them. And if they don't go along with his program, he, he, uh, 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 so there's a there's a there, there's a that's a challenge. So they're voting for their interest and they're supporting Cameron for their own interest, not because they want her to be president, but they're the she's the best option for them to be able to go back and as Sir Robert say, continue their struggle for what they want to have done, uh, and and go back to you know the normal thing of putting people in their place. And they still have their power and their juice. Right now, they don't have no juice in the Republican Party. He controlled 47 percent of the vote, 45 percent of the vote. He never got to 50 percent, but he's building. So they keep quiet, and um, you know they uh, they work for him. He's pimping, you know. He's pimping them. He got he's pimping them all, you know, because he got the power, the money, and the juice. Uh, how, how can you be a person running for president say you're going to um, give pardon to all the people that participated in the insurrection. How are you going to become a candidate and for president and none of the party is speaking against you except for a small minority uh, and you got 39 felonies when we can get a parking ticket and don't pay it and get a warrant and we can't get a job nowhere as a policeman, as nothing. Uh, you understand? So uh, you have to put down if you're a felon, uh, and even if you were adjudicated innocent, you have to put down, have you ever been arrested? They don't even say if you've been convicted. Have you ever been arrested for a crime? And then you got to tell them what happened. You know, they explain the circumstances. And if you don't put it down, they accuse you of lying on your application, and uh, then they, they just throw that application in the, in the trash can. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a struggle, brother. Yeah, uh, uh, camera and the Democratic Party welcome all the Republican defectors that's bold enough to put money in and try to get against Trump. But remember, she's running to be the Democratic Party nomination, which really allows for a, a, a strong two-party system, whereas they debate issues versus what Trump saying that ain't nothing to discuss. Uh, I I determine what's right and what's wrong, so that's that's the challenge it is, and it's good you know it's good that they have cultivated that, and they're trying. But remember, uh, uh, they still white people, you know, <laughs> you, know you you got to remember that, and white people they will unify to neutralize us and work toward that. They still have the advantage, even if camera win, white folks still have the advantage. Are, are any any any, any, any bag up uh, are he any other question? No, thank you. You uh, answered that. Uh, I'm content uh, with that answer. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Um. I would like to make one comment before I go. Mm. Um. No matter what happens in this election year, there will be a winner and there will be a loser. I am so very excited to see who will win. And I'm very excited to see what the first 100 days in office of that winner will be like. What I do know is that whoever wins, they will do whatever the bankers, including international bankers, the national bankers, international bankers, and all the corporations that engineered their candidacy. That's who they will be serving. The party is, is, is the word they use. The party and um, their policies. Uh, that's what, and I'm very interested to see. I know that it is a corrupt system. So it's just one corruption after the other corruption goes into the White House. I don't think Black people will ever get any direct um, respect 
of their votes. And if they do get any, I appreciate that. And I think, you know, but I have empathy for my people, for the black people. And I hope that all that they desire and aspire for can be achieved through the vote, through their voting. And, you know, I hope they can also weather the storm of disappointment because it's an historical fact. It's con constantly and continuously happening throughout the history of this nation. And, uh, but I'm gonna be optimistic. I'm not going to be a pessimist because our people need hope. Hope comes through opportunity. Let us see what political opportunities will be offered and given to black people and how significant it will be towards our condition in our communities. Let us see, as the wise man say, we shall see. So I'm giving my, I'm sending positive energies that whoever gets in office will be courageous enough to, to be the true leader of people, of the American people, which includes black people, and not be a hypocrite, whoever sits in that White House next, to not only the American people, but to the black people as well because we are Americans, whether they want to accept us as that or not, no matter where we come from, as long as we're here and we are here legally and lawfully as citizens of this country, we will fight for this country in their wars and we will build this country. So we deserve the respect and the honor as what history has shown what we have, we have given to this country. So um, I will continue to observe until the year ends, you know, and we'll see who the president is in January. All right. All right. Any, any other questions? All right, Rasha P, what's coming on tomorrow? Rasha P? We have Navaline Smith coming on. She, she was a, a resident of of Ujima Village, a housing uh, complex in South, I would say that's South Central. No, I was in, well, it was off of uh, El Segundo. And, so uh, so it's, it's South LA, Yeah, uh, not so much Central, but it's, it's no. south, right next to Compton. And she has a very interesting story and a courageous woman who stood up to the, the uh, County supervisors of Los Angeles uh, fighting for her right to get what she was allotted to get. So a very interesting story. I don't want to say too much. I want her to talk about it. So it's tomorrow, and she has a book out, Last Lady Standing in Ujima Village, True Story by Navaline Smith. All right, I'm going to be waiting to talk. I, I know a lot about the history of that village. I'm going to see where she, you know, when she started moving there. Uh, and things of this nature because I was there when they first started it. All right. Okay. So each uh, one teach one in Conscious Corner. All right. Okay.